Okay, so we are recording live. This is obviously going to be on our YouTube feed. So this is before the actual show is on the air. Um, make sure you listen to the show on am1240wgbb.com, and we're going to be broadcasting this live on our website. So you can check that out. Also, I am start broadcasting right now. So here we are. We're all ready to go, and the show's going to start. It's up to you to be ready. Dedicate. Make a plan. Be informed. Today. Go ahead at www.ready.gov. Okay. This message brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Act Council. From the heart of the Mile, you're listening to the station that serves your community. AM 1240 WGBB.com and 1240 WGBB Freeport. views expressed in the following program do not necessarily represent those of the staff, management, or owners of WGBB. Hey, this is Ty Monk, a.k.a. Bruce Lee Rich from The Last Dragon, and you're listening to It Came From The Radio on WGBB at 1240 AM. The following is brought to you in part by MFC Studios. The views and opinions of the show's hosts and guests do not necessarily reflect those of the owners, management, or staff of WGBB. And now, it came from the radio. Speaking with me in the studio, I have our very special guest, um, Kelly Gordon. Hey, what's up, everyone? I also have Mike Epstein. Hello there, Long Island. And they are from the East Meadows uh, Anime Convention, which is coming up uh, in two weeks. That's right, two weeks. On the 15th, 16th, and 17th of May. Yeah, three days. We're, we're crazy today, right? This year. We're going to be doing it up this year, most definitely. And this is the fifth annual, right? The fifth annual. And also, we should be having our senior correspondent, Charlie Saldino, calling in any moment, hopefully, because we are live, and he's supposed to be uh, telling us what's going on at the convention that he's at, which is the LI Geek. We had the um, Andre uh, Tessier and uh, Ken Deep, who were here last week, uh, talking about the convention, which is going on live right now in the Ronkonkoma Airport. Um, I was there, and I'm going to be talking about that while we're waiting for Charlie to call in, because he should have a special interviewee or two on uh, live. Um, so if anybody's having any trouble listening to us on the air, you can go online to www.am1240wgbb.com and listen to us on the live audio streaming. Also on the GBB website, you can see us in the live uh, studio web camera. And you can also see us in the live streaming on our own website, www.itcamefromradio.com, which is also recording on the uh, web camera right now. And it will be also available up on our um, YouTube page afterwards. Uh, so let's see. Um, normally we take it with the news, but we have no news because we have such a full show. But I did want to mention that the news and the show is brought to you in part by the fine folks at the Big Apple Con, of which they're celebrating their 20th anniversary um, in this past March. Um, <coughs> they are uh, our official, we are the official radio show of them, and so they're promoting the Eternal Con, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, and the uh, Winter Con, which is coming up in December. But right now we're doing. Um, a Donuts and Comics, which is going to be on Tuesday, March, uh, May 12th at 1 p.m. in Donut Plant and on 23rd Street in Manhattan. Um, there's going to be free comics, free donuts, uh, free coffee, and uh, free uh, comic book appraisals for anybody who, uh, who registers for the website, up to 10 people, uh, the comics, the donuts, and uh, coffee is free for anybody, but people who um, have the uh, appraisals, you have to register for that. And if you go to the uh, New York um, NYCDM, New York Comic Book Marketplace.com, is where you can find all the information to register. And you can ask questions, and we can read them live on the on the show. All right, so I'm guessing we have uh, Charlie on the air. Charlie, say hi. Hey, how's everybody doing? And we also have Hassan there too. Oh yeah. Say hi, Hassan. We're having a. I'm fine. 
So um, we're actually, so Charlie's actually live at the um, LI Geek Con right now. So why don't you tell us a little bit about it there, Charlie? Oh my God, it's, it's an amazing uh, con. It's the most accessible con I've ever been to. Um, it's the stars are all, um, uh, all um, right in front of your eyes, and it's uh, just safe to see them, talk to them. I talked to David Warner, and uh, it's just a pleasure. And uh, Spencer Wilder, who, uh, who plays the White Walker and, and Green Lantern, and, and uh, so many things are Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, I have an interview with him. Uh, Nina, um, Nina Tassan White. Um, is uh, I just did an interview with her, and just a lot of fun here, a um, lot of fun, and uh, we're just um, just working around and trying to find people. And uh, I'm with Andre now, and he's leading me someplace. So why don't you guys do what you got to do, and then I'll interrupt you when I'm in. Okay. Um, I just want to mention that um, it's a working airport, so it's kind of weird that you're in an airport, but it's a convention, much like uh, Kelly has a working library convention. So it's 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 a unique experience in and of itself to be at an airport. So you have people with baggage and going on an airplane. A convention in an airport. A convention in an airport. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, you have people wanting to take a flight, and then you have people in dressed up as uh, ogres and stuff walking by. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets put on the wrong flight. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 very uh, weird, and also um, as a uh, Andre and Ken said, it was a very small convention, mm -hmm. so it's very approachable yeah. with all the people that are there. It's really kind of cool how you can just walk up to somebody and interact with them, as opposed to you know the bigger guys, which they had their own thing being the big guys, of course. But it, you lose that intimacy for at, at a convention yeah. where. You know, it's just it's small, and it's a small airport. It's MacArthur Airport, so it's not like JFK, where you know everybody's just on security. You can't even step foot on the on the, air, on the airport area before anything goes down. It's pretty much there's a lot of police presence, which is good, and you know you're walking around, but it's it's an open area. <laughs> As I mentioned, they have little panels. They have a lot of stuff to do. Um, well, what's, what's great about it is that if there's some kind of security issue or if someone is acting out, they can just throw them on a plane. <laughs> And send them away. <laughs> That's so, you know, it's really outside. <laughs> you're, you're somebody else's problem now? So yes, exactly. <laughs> um, the, the panels were kind of cool. Um, it was all spread out. And there was a lot of stuff to do. Um, the, the key thing for me, because I'm not familiar with a lot of these people who are guests of the show, mm. were the panels. And they had tons and tons of panels and stuff to do for somebody um, like, my, like for myself. Just who's and who's the programs? Yeah, there was a lot of stuff, different places, a lot of stuff going on. And so, you know, you get to sit and uh, once again, it's up close and personal with the, the panel um, people and you get to talk and it's really a nice little atmosphere on how really cool it was. They had, um, my, my personal favorite panel, because, you know, I won, was they had a, um, a, a family feud type of panel where you know they have audience members come up and they play the feud to, to answer questions and you know you had to raise your hand instead of ringing the bell but you, it was kind of nice and you know my team won mm -hmm. although um we um we lost on the to name a tv show uh, name a science fiction tv show and i think an incredible hope because of the oh. show yes mm -hmm. charlie i'm here with rob Shearer, who has played out here called uh cash laughter and um and uh, I want to, you, you to talk to him about the play and, uh, and what it's all about and uh, just promote his play left and right as you, you know, on the radio. If that's all right with you guys. Is he talking to us or them? <laughs> I'm talking to you. Oh, yeah, of course it's all right with us. That's what we okay. do. Okay, so I'm going to give you the phone and it's Rob Shear and the name of his play, play is called Pass Master. Oh, you need Master. What is Easy. Easy laughter. Oh. Okay, Rob Sherman. An easy laughter. Yeah. It's an odd song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so here's Rob. So, hi, Rob. Why don't you introduce yourself? This is uh, Rob How How's it going? I'm very well, thank you. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your play that you're doing? Right. Um, well, I'm. I, I've written a play many years ago now, which is a very, very strange, dark comedy set at Christmas, in which you begin to realize that the family Christmas which is going on is actually a lot, a lot darker than you could possibly imagine. There's 
Um, it's actually set at a time called, called, called Christ Hyde rather than Christmas itself. And they're celebrating something very, very unpleasant alongside the birth of Jesus. Um, I'm personally best known by Dr. Who episode Dalek. So I'm, so I'm a sort of science fiction writer from, from the UK and I'm also a, a, a quite notable known as a, as a comedy writer. And this is my first time doing a show in New York and um, I'm, I'm having, it's a very, very exciting time for me. So, um, why, so why don't you tell us the difference between writing something over in the UK as opposed to doing something for an American audience? Um, I think the American audience is often rather smarter, to be honest. Um, the, the British audience, we, we do not feel, I, I, I think sometimes, that the theatre is something which is, is of the people. Um, it's something that we, that we sometimes dress up more for and is actually sometimes rather less um, fun and rather less experimental. The thing which I'm getting from coming to New York is that, is that you do get this wonderful sense that the theatre is something which which is very, very, um, very immediate. And, and, and I found, just, you know, in fact we opened this last week, the audiences that, that we get are just, are just much more intelligent, they, uh, they uh, laugh a lot more, and they seem to understand much more what it is that we're it, 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 up to. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful place to be actually doing, doing some theatre. When you're back in the UK, um, as I will be in a few days, everybody involved in theatre always thinks about um, aspiring to think of things like Broadway and, and New York in general. So I'm, I'm having a wonderful time actually dealing with, I think, a very, very, I think the most sophisticated audience is probably in, in the world, actually. That's, that's kind of weird that you would say that. I mean, you know, toilet humor is abound all the way. People love toilet humor of all different ethnicities and backgrounds. Uh, right. <laughs> so, when, um, and that's also one thing I do know about the, the UK is that they use certain words that um, are not allowed over there that are perfectly fine over here. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, obviously, there's, there's these big cultural differences. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it isn't the play actually where, where I'm sort of treading too much upon those of the toes, to be honest. I mean, I'm hoping that, I mean, I would, I would rate it as a, an audience of people for 14 years and older. But, 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 I mean, but it's an interesting challenge, actually, also because as they said at Christmas, and of course, even Christmas is celebrated differently in the UK from, from the US, and there are different traditions. But it's actually quite fun because it makes it seem a little bit more alien in some ways. Right. Um, it's a very, very fine US cast doing it, who, who I'm very, very proud of. And uh, yeah, it's, a bit, it's, it's something which I'm, I'm just very, very um, excited to actually just be watching. I wrote it back in 1992. And it won the Sunday Times Playwriting Award that, that year. It became a sort of a slightly scandalous, rather dark play within Britain for a few years. And it, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see it revived again so well for a completely different audience. So where can people um, find out more about your work and yourself? Well, well, well my name is Bob Shearman, um, and I do have a website. I mean, I, I, I like books. Uh, and I and I sound probably best known for having written for uh, for, for the TV show Doctor Who, which which is taking off quite well over here in the states at the moment. Um, and uh, I, I I I think I have a website. Um, <laughs> you think you have a website? Yeah, I mean it's a strange thing. I mean people tell me I have a website. Um, I um, and then people publicise what I'm doing on there. I I'm not very good at this because I can barely type. So there's something mm -hmm. that. Uh, but, but I, I occasionally do uh, self-Google. I have been guilty of self-Googling. And, and, and I found out that that seems to keep people up to date. And I'm also on things like Facebook and yeah. whatever. So, so if people want to actually find out more about what I'm up to, um, it shouldn't be too hard to find me. All right. Um, so that's Robert Shearman, S-H-E-A-R-M-A-N. S-H-E-A-R-M-A-N. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Um, much continued success. You can pass you back to Charlie. Extremely kind. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So that was um, Robert Sherman, not Sherman, Sherman, um, very nice guy. Um, he is, uh, he also won many awards. So he has a short story. Bob? Yes. Listen. Yes, I am listening. Um, I want you to um, know uh, about the tickets, how, how people can get tickets for this place. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so um, hold on a minute and uh, I'll give you my hand. Hold on. <laughs> 
Hello. Hello again. Hello. I'm sorry about that. I, 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 I mean, I'm in mean, such a good story because I'm still on that sort of jet lag time. So I utterly forgot actually to explain how to get tickets for the show if you want to come. Yes, uh, And it's available from dirtcontained.com. There's one word, dirt contained. Um, and, and, uh, and the tickets are available and, 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 it's, and, it's, through, and it's through until May, May 10th. Oh, okay, so thank you, you so much. I'm, 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 I'm sorry that I've got a hundred pounds here. That's good. But I, I sort of forgot that that rather important information. It's, it's live. It's all good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. I shall pass you back. Thank you very much indeed. All right, thank you. And that was still another chairman. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Mike. I, I am on my way to another uh, another um, person. So. Uh, just, um, say hi. We'll talk amongst ourselves in one oh, our experimental uh, show. Oh, okay. So Hassan, you actually uh, were invited specifically by these guys, yeah, and, no, and, and did you get to go? No, I did not get to go. You see, the, you see, you didn't like them, right? You're like, oh my god. You see, they, uh, yeah, they, they went out of their way to invite you. So what's the saying? Um, now you're starting I, trouble. I don't. <laughs> trying to start I think trouble. it was Groucho Marx who came up with it. Yes. I would never be a member of a club that would have me as a member. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if I do have that mentality, it was not the case. I did not fire me. Rather important. <laughs> and I had, to, I had to take care of it, but I did thoroughly appreciate the invite. Seeing as how, I, even though a cherished member of this organization, <laughs> I was not invited to the last um, outing. The last, the last big outing that we had. Yeah, since I, was, I was merely not on hand, and no one thought to send me a ticket. <laughs> Everybody so I, had a function. Yeah, even though it was a stroke and off the dog to a dog. But that doesn't matter. It, it, you know, I'm glad everybody had a good time. I'm glad Charlie's there and representing correctly. It seems like he's having a really good time. I'm very sad that I wasn't able to be there this weekend. I have made a committed promise to, be to, <laughs> to all future engagements so that everybody who doesn't see me can actually see me and realize this. And there it is. And there it is. Good, good man, good man. Yeah, I tried. So as I was as I was saying um, on the uh, Family Feud thing, um, you know, his name is science fiction or fantasy TV show. The Incredible Hulk was not on there, and I was like, wait, that's how could I not get well, points for that? I, I thought that's like an intersection there. I mean, it's a it's TV a show. Superhero. It's superhero. It's probably that's probably why these people are not genre experts. <laughs> so they just decided it was a superhero genre and not a science fiction genre. Ah, all right. right? I, I get it. Yeah, it, it, you should have, it should have worked, Mark. Yes. It been uh, vindicated right there. But we still won, yeah. so it was all good. Yeah, you did well. Wow. And then they had a Wheel of Fortune one. Um, one of the one of the clues was um, the, the the words on the Wheel of Fortune was "Chewy, we're home." Hmm. So uh, yeah, <laughs> very topical. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was a grand old time. Um, they had a, a panel. Did I, did you, do I have a minute to share a thought about that? Yes. Okay. Um, not in general about the, the new trailer, right? And everybody's really excited about the new trailer. Almost and everybody. It, almost everybody's very excited. And it, it, looks, it is beautiful. It, it, looks, it looks gorgeous. It looks more Star Wars. It was wonderful, right? Yes. Then, then Chewie popped up and, and Han, and Han says, Chewie, we're home. And, you know, supposedly 40 something all over the, the planet started crying. Uh, <laughs> It was, you know, with the, uh, a, a, a long awaited glimpse at their long lost icon, right? Yeah. The only person that didn't get upset about it uh, in a good way, the South is with it, was me. And I'll explain why. And I will take no more time than this. All right. I didn't want to see Han old. I don't want to see Luke old. Hmm. I don't want to see Leia old. They were immortal. Until just now, until that commercial, and until I watched that trailer, my heroes were immortal, and now they're now they're mortal. Now they're flinty old people on 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 the musical. And <laughs> I I'm not 100 percent excited about this. <laughs> and <it's not laughs> well, the 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 feedback I got from my so I was like, that's not Han Solo. That's Harrison Ford. He, he, he stopped yeah. being Han Solo. He's just, what, what's Harrison Ford doing there with a... Chewbacca. 
Russell was insane. Yes. Russell was what? And everybody was like, yeah, what's Harrison Ford making out with Chewbacca? <laughs> it's what Indiana Jones doing with Chewbacca. It's <laughs> like, um, it, it's true. Indiana Jones did still feel like Indiana Jones, but this one it just felt like it was. And Chewbacca don't look like he aged a bit. Like he looks. So so there's an argument that was being made about that. I've heard that many many times, and, and I understand what you're saying, and I agree with you. The argument made is that Chewbacca was already 200 years old. What? A new yeah. hope happened. Yeah, because he was in um in the uh, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Oh. So so another 30 years isn't gonna really do much to a guy who's, who's clearly. <laughs> Clearly able to, to withstand centuries of time before he passes away. So, and, you know, it's it's funny that you mentioned um, the Star Wars. Uh, there was a panel going on right now, if I'm not mistaken, about how the Disney era of Star Wars, or should they be claiming bring George Lucas back? So there's tons of stuff that discussions are really? is, yeah, it's happening at the convention. So it's really kind of nice. You're saying bring? Well, they haven't even that premature sure, because they haven't even seen the film yet. Come on, you know that everybody looks I, to, to I know. piece I apart know. a trailer. No, nobody's yeah. ever happy. No, <laughs> but and I and I would, I would, I don't like the vitriol against George Lucas. I'm 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 very outspoken about that. I've said that on the show a, a bunch of times. I don't agree with a lot of the changes he's made, but I agree that it was his right to make them. And if we didn't have him, we wouldn't have them in the first place. So that's that's always where there's a buck stops with me. But, look, since we've come this far, we've spent X amount of million dollars and a lot of publicity and all this all this work we've done on episode seven. Can we just see it first before we decide it's crap and that we should bring the old guy back? You know, we got Star Wars Rebels, uh, the TV show on Disney XD, that is sort of like a preview of how Disney is handling the franchise. And from what I've seen of it, you know, it's very well made. It just completed its first season last month. And they had some big name town on it, Greg Wiseman, who created Gargoyles. And uh, I'm really excited about season two because apparently Darth Vader is going to be brought in as the main villain for yeah. that. And, you know, I, they they got rid of the sh one of the show one of the producers and brought in one of the uh, one of the previous producers from Clone Wars. So that's why there's a lot of Clone Wars characters, a lot of canon characters will be will be showing up, including Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader. Um, Don't spoil it for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Mom. Yes, Charlie. Charlie is back. Yes. Mom. Yes. I have an amazing interview. Who, who we got? Who we got? You have to call White from. Wait, did I mess that up? Don't, don't oh, oh, yes, I do, then, because that's the point. Let her say her name. I have no point in <laughs> But anyway, uh, from Doctor Who and um, novelist actress, and uh, we're live on the air, aren't we? Yes, we are still live on the air. Still live on the air. Here's <laughs> Nia. Hello, Nia. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing quite well. So why don't you tell us about your experience at this convention and introduce yourself to the people who don't know who you are. Who am I talking? Who is listening? Well, let's see. We've had people, um, we're online live, so we're also on the air right now live on um, the airways on 1240 AM, and we're also on the website, which is am 1240 wgbbcom so we have live audio streaming, so anybody in the world can see us. And oh yours. my goodness. Hello, everyone. Here with this thing. So what do you want to know? You want to know about my experience on and that, the convention here? Well, yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then tell us your experience at the convention. Okay, so I'm Nina Tusek-White, and um, a lot of people are at the convention because I'm Mel, and that's Mel in Doctor Who. Um, and yeah, I'm just an actress really, and I'm having a really great time at the convention. Um, it's quite quiet here, but everyone's really happy at every single convention I've been to, so it's a, I don't know, it's a good vibe, good positive vibe that I always get from everyone. So yeah, I'm enjoying myself. I'm tired. I must say I'm tired, but at the end of the day. <laughs> so as an, as an actress, um, things I always wonder about is, when you decide to become an actress, do you want to have a whole body of work to have many different roles, or are you looking for that one role that you can be iconicized as and immortalized as for the rest of your life? No, no, a body of work. I think um, the, the reason I went into acting is because it, the, the variety is a spice of, the spice of life, I think, and I love being different people. I love taking on different roles. and. Um, 
I thought it would be great if I had an iconic role that went on forever and ever and ever, but it is, it appeals to me more to do different jobs. Okay. And that, that's the exciting thing, you never know what's going to happen, like Monday, tomorrow, I could get a call from the agent, you could be somewhere else in the world doing some, something different, and that's what I get excited about. And you also were on on, 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 a, on a stage, right? Uh, yes, I've done some stage work. I was I did a, a mallet play uh, two years ago on a stage in the UK. Um, and I'm doing another play in August this year in the UK again. Um, but I, I mean, I didn't leave a lot of TV. So, I, you know, British drama, comedy, stuff like that. So is there a favorite genre of uh, performance that you like to do? Mm, I think I'm suited more to like dramatic, high emotional stuff. I find it harder when I have to be kind of vulnerable. Um, but also I seem to be put into a lot of comedy. I'm not a funny person, but I seem to get a lot of comedy gigs for some reason. But you, I'm have not the, dog. you have the comedic timing down. There we go. Apparently, I've been told, but it don't, you know, don't quote me on that, please. Um, you're, you're immortalized on the radio, so you're being quoted on that. Oh no! <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, um, do you find that um, as a gender, as a female, do you find yes. that your roles are, are specifically because you're a woman less than those other men? Because that's a big thing that's going on right now about how women empowerment and things are going on. What's your take on that? Sorry, sorry, can you repeat that? Because being a female, what? Being a, a female actress, female character, do you find yes. that um, the female empowerment has changed throughout the years or it's the same? What is your take on how women are being portrayed? I, um, personally for myself. Well, it's all about yourself, yes. I think, I, I think, one second, oh, I've got to walk somewhere, sorry, I'm walking. Okay. Sorry, sorry, someone's making it again, sorry, I got a bit confused. <laughs> um, so, um, I think, look, I kind of get stereotyped, um, and it's not about, I think it's just the way I look, you know, the urban look, and I get stereotyped, but I've got quite a young look. Um, so it's not an, it's not a changing thing of female character, it's more like they put me into a bracket um, of young council state mum. Does council state mean in this experience? I, I know about it, yes. Uh, yeah, so, yes. Yeah. so a bit like that, but it was, you know, the Doctor Who really broke me free from that. Um, you know, I got to be this feisty, sexy um, woman of power and I would like to see more roles like that um, but I have been tucked off throughout my career I think. Alright so speaking of your career where can people find out more about you? Uh, Google me, check out the Wikipedia, you can follow me on Twitter, um, I mean I, I don't say anything funny or interesting on Twitter whatsoever, they might get a bit bored. <laughs> Like selfies of myself, but um, selfies of myself, what's the defenders? Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, no, yeah, so you just Google and stuff like that, and um, I'm sure you can get things online, and yeah, right. and YouTube, the clips of short like, soaps are done, stuff like that. All right, well, thank you very much. You can hand yourself back off to Charlie. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll be speaking to you. <laughs> no problem, that was a near to some white. Um, most of for being in the Doctor Who episode with playing Mel. Um, I love, I love the accent. <laughs> there we go. So here we go. I'm on the way out again. So I'll put you on mute and. Uh, well, Charlie, what time is it by the way? We're all, we're actually over time, so if you can oh, squeeze right. in a little more, so you. Can. Uh, any other any other uh, interviews? I'll get a and um, and then we'll get back to the show. But. Uh, I'm still running around here, so have a good rest of the show. Alright, Charlie, uh, thanks a lot. Tell Kelly I said hello. Hey Charlie, how you doing? Good, how you doing, guy? Um, I'm looking forward to your time. Oh yes, it's going to be a blast this year. Okay, beautiful. Alright, I'll talk to you soon, Kelly. Alright. Alright, All right. thanks, thanks Charlie. Guys. So, as that was Charlie live with two interviews, which is really cool. I've got to say again, I love the accent. Yeah. Oh my god. Are there any American <laughs> guests at that convention? Because no. David Warner is actually one. Um, no, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, as far as I, I know. I guess that's why they have a convention at the airport. That's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> 
So, so going from one convention, and um, as we are, uh, Charlie will have uh, interviews for digital. We'll have it on the show play at a later date and time. Uh, most of the Great pictures year. are also going to be on our Facebook page of everything that all the people in costume over there. And like I said, it's a working airport, so it's a very odd experience. Yeah. But we're going from one convention in an airport to another convention in a working library. Once again, you have your own little unique little thing going on here. That's right, Mark. And you've been doing it for five years. This was the first one in the airport, so this is their first time out doing this convention. So yes. now you have the advantage of a working library. So no planes. <laughs> no planes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Al Kelly? Oh, okay, well, excellent. Well, basically, like uh, like, you, like you mentioned, it's uh, that five years running. Uh, we started back in uh, 2011, and it's pretty much uh, I have to say about MCON Anime Fest is basically uh, a celebration of the arts. Uh, we we have so much things going on there. We have like Tai Chi demonstrations, cosplay masquerades, artist alley, drawing workshops, anime lectures, uh, concerts. I mean the works basically. It's like you know, and it's, and the best part about it is free. I mean, wait, it's who, free. Who love free? <laughs> it's the best price. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So the only well, I don't even understand that word. What is it? What is free? It's like the alien word. Yeah, I know, right? It, I, I still, to this day, I still get like emails from people through the website. Uh, wish you could gradually check it out at www.mcon anime fest. That's E M C O N anime fest. A N I M E F E S T dot com. And uh, I still get emails from people contacting me asking how much it is and uh, where can I register or get tickets. And I have it on the website. It actually states it's free. And they, you know, we have uh, um, just great panels. So we have uh, we have loads of good guests coming in, um, contributing to this um, convention. And I'm very happy in um, how well successful it has been going through these five years uh, for MCON at the Eastville Public Library. Now, I've asked you this before, and I'm going to ask you again. How do you run a successful convention without charging for tickets and make a profit? Well, it's... Um, how, how do you do it? Because that's... Well, I, I have a great team at, in my office at the public relations at the library. Um, I have to give a lot of uh, credit to my uh, my supervisor and boss, um, Ju Chancellor. She's the program director. Uh, she knows pretty much a lot about getting grants in and how to get the financial support in just to... Um, basically to support these panels and bring in these guests that we can offer to get to the public. And, um, and I'm very happy that she allowed me to uh, freely uh, and listens to my recommendation of what kind of program we can endure for the, uh, for the library and she trusts me that much to do so. So um, I have to say like yeah, basically it's like mainly through the grants and a lot of people sometimes even help out and contribute and help out. I have, I have to give a lot of thanks to like, um, like Funimation and Viz Media and also write stuff and basically a lot of local merch merchant uh, merchants that's out there like combo Book Depot and Phoenix Comics whatnot they they help out giving out prizes and whatnot and all the great artists that uh, that pretty much partake in for the artist alley they're you know, coming in here and you know it's just it, uh, believe it or not it all started like like I said five years ago with just me doing a drawing workshop and um, having some a couple of people come in and, and showing off their artwork. It was start off. It was just a one day thing. Yeah, and I was uh, running on a old twenty year old television set with a fifteen year old DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> and then look at us now. We're you know we're having some great guests. I'm gonna go on a lineup with you with the guests we're having here. Uh, we're going we're having uh, Sue Lee from uh, Sci Fi Face Off. Uh, season two, she was wow. like uh, a yeah, um, uh, last runner-up uh, contestant on the uh, um, face-off. She's gonna be there uh, throughout the whole weekend and doing a demonstration workshop how to do special effects and makeup. Uh, we're having uh, De uh, Team Denny cosplay, uh, a lovely couple that I met at uh, believe it or not the WinterCon, uh, New York Con that we that we just you know uh, we was there previously. Uh, they're gonna c be coming out there talking about um, cosplaying and also helping out with the judging on the cosplay contest and we're having a great anime concert um, you know given to Hitomi Himikawa and the Rainbow Bubble Dancers who pretty much is right outside the studio right now as we speak waiting to come in and whatnot and talk to everyone. Well, um, you want to go get them while I, uh, there we go, so we're going to have to go get them while we can. That's not good. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> and um, yeah. also, we're having a, a live interview Skyped in. Um, by Vic Miana, the, he does. He's a, a famous voice actor. He does like um, a lot of famous voices for a lot of animes, like particularly for example, Brawly, who does Dragon Ball. Is that in Dragon Ball Z? 
and uh, Edward Elric, who does, uh, who's in the Full Metal Alchemist uh, animation as well. We're going to be Skyping him in. And I hear that you guys will be hosting that interview. Yes, that's, that's uh, myself, Asana, and Charlie are going to be uh, on the panel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> hosting, hosting the interview. Um, it's uh, it's going to be really cool. Yeah, this way. This is live on, on, on tape right here. There you go. So, yeah, we're going to be uh, doing our very first panel, which is going to be really cool. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting thing because this is a, a new experience for us. I mean, um, we had a table many years ago over there. Yes. Uh, I didn't even get to go. Yeah, we're still going to make that, that uh, cardboard oh, yeah. clip out of yourself there, standing <laughs> in the middle. We did. We picked it over, though. Um, but, you know, we weren't supposed to tell Mark about that. <laughs> <laughs> We laid his face down at one point because he wasn't there. Is that, is, that, is that what happened? Yeah, no, it's not. Um, we, 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 uh, we did it, the show, what is it, two years ago, was it? I um, believe that it was for uh, second MCON in 2012. I believe, wow. yeah, I believe it was 2012. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't that long. And it was, we, you know, we, I, I showed up a little late, of course. Yes. Charlie was there. Yeah, uh, I don't even want to know. Um, and everybody we had a great, we had a, a, a fantastic time, you know. And it is also, um, I don't know if this is, this is relevant, but it's a fantastic library. Thank also. you. Like the, the, uh, well, the, the, the area, the layout, everything, and the people that we had there that, was, that were helping us out, giving us information. And then the, the fans, the people that come to see, and people were flocking in, people were, were coming in pretty steadily. So it was really a, a, a fantastic occasion. Yeah, thank you. Our so it's not like a dumped library, it's a really cool library, <laughs> and it can mention anything. It is not the Bronx library. Yeah, you don't hear no yeah. ambulances or bullet shots coming out against the airwaves. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you most likely will not get shot. And it's like a well, well, we can't guarantee anything, but... <laughs> oh, <laughs> anything, no. Don't say that. It's an opinion. All right. No, it's a really great place. It's a great layout, and it's, it's a wonderful place. You should go on a regular basis anyway when there's not an event because it, it, it's kind of it's really accommodating. It's got wide open spaces for you to read uh, everything. It, it's really nice. I really liked it. I enjoyed it uh, immensely. Come for the anime, stay for the books. Exactly. <laughs> and please stay for the books because we need people to read. We really do. <laughs> reading is important. From the desk of a Son Godwin, reading is very important. Reading is very important. That's my public service announcement for the day. So while we were in the middle of all this, um, he told me. Uh, no, 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 no. Where's Tommy? He told me he's outside. He's outside. Okay. Okay. I thought I thought okay. she looked different like this. Like, <laughs> no, I thought he had a different hairstyle. So why don't you introduce yourself? Um. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I am Lulu. I am the new Zelda member. Of the Rainbow Bubble Girls. Yes. Yeah. And hi, um, I'm Julian. Well, my nickname is Julie, and I'm also sort of a new member, but I've been here for almost a year now in Rainbow Bubble Girls, so yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Rainbow Bubble? Well, um, basically, um, Rainbow Bubble is a J-pop idol group that is based around New York City, and we try to travel to different conventions around the area, and we just simply perform our own original songs, and we perform covers of different songs like Vocaloid, K-pop, and J-pop. Um, we're also working on other other projects in the future, like more songs and like another album and even a music video. So just stay tuned for that. We also have lots of original dances and songs. Uh, most of them are composed by Hitomi the Great, who just walked in. Ginger, <laughs> <Hi. laughs> see that's the face I'm familiar yeah. with. <laughs> All <laughs> <the> Ginger. <laughs> yeah, I was here two years ago. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. A and it's right there yeah. on the poster. <laughs> You thought that I was you. Yeah, because I was like, <laughs> they said she only was here, and I'm like, that doesn't look like her, but they said she's here, and I know that she's supposed to be here, and they yeah. didn't look like she you at all, and yet, I'm like, all right, so maybe she changed her look. <laughs> <laughs> she, she need like three more inches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm short. Sure. Okay, I'm like three feet tall. Yeah, she's short. Yeah. Okay, I'm short. So, um, you write your own songs. Yes, I do. Where do you find your inspiration? I think that was a question from two years ago. I think that was a question from two years ago, yes. but I'm gonna repeat it. Yes, repeat the answer for those of you who are listening now and have listened to it last time. Fantasy, uh, anime, uh, friendship, and uh, uh, natural, and uh, family, friends, and everything around me. All right, so so life, pretty much. Then. Mm. Yeah, life. All right, so um, you ladies. 
Well, how did you decide to join her group? Well, basically, she found me in a maid cafe, and I was doing open mic, and I was just like, um, I was pretty bad at singing. I was okay at dancing, <laughs> but um, this was at a point where I just moved back to, um, from upstate New York, and I moved to New York City again. And she saw a video of me singing and stuff like that. And then she's like, I want that girl. I see potential in that girl. So basically, uh, um, uh, she came to me. And I was just like pretty excited. I'm like, ooh, I love J-pop idols, so why not? <laughs> um, I joined just recently, but I also cosplay outside of the group and everything. And I've been cosplaying for a while. I was cosplaying Chi from Chobits. It's a um, really cute anime. but. I went to an uh, event that the s store Hime Romance was hosting in New York, and uh, I was really unsure of going, and it was a tea party, I didn't know that many people, but my friends were like, you should go, you should go. So I went, and it said karaoke and stuff, and I started singing the opening uh, song from the anime Chobits, because okay. I was dressed for it. <laughs> and when I was singing, I met Hitomi, and Hitomi's like, Oh, you're really cute, and I'm like, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she asked me if I like singing, and I'm like, yeah, of course. And she's like, do you dance? I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah. And then she's like, well, do you want to be an idol? Yeah, yeah, I very much. <laughs> so she's like, okay, and she's like, I'm recruiting you. So that's how I became. All right, fair enough. Asan, you have a question for the young ladies or uh, Kelly? Absolutely. Well, I have uh, mostly a question for Kelly. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so how exactly do you get all this talent? How do you attract them all for this show? You know, starting to, and how do you know them? You know, how do you, how do you, <laughs> 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 I'm, well, I'm trying to get around that, actually. I got it from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. Wow. Well, I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Asan, it, it more, it mainly is just um, like just networking and being in the field. I mean, me being a, um, a huge anime uh, fan, I mean, I've watched anime since, I mean, who knows, like very long time, very, very long time, and I, um, I me, myself, is also um, an artist, and I like to illustrate and draw my own books and whatnot, and um, I've just been going to conventions. And uh, you know, it's all about networking and talking and word of mouth. And speaking of which, is that's pretty much uh, how I I um, found out about Tomi was from word of mouth. She uh, performed at a, um, a convention uh, nearby me, a Tasho Con that was in Rockville Center, I believe. 2012. Yeah, in 2012, and uh, I believe the person that coordinated, uh, Marissa Lieberman, uh, she told me about uh, it. Told me because I was looking for an uh, awesome music group to come to my co next convention. And uh, she recommended you, so I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I I must have it told me at <laughs> MCon." And um, you know, and I said to myself, "Yeah, yeah I'm definitely gonna have her come back for our fifth one because I know she, with her help we can make uh, MCon five even better than the previous years." Because last year we actually gotten 4,500 patrons to come in. That's crazy. 4,500. Yes, yeah, crazy. That is crazy. And the first one we did in 2011, we only had like like 250. So you can see with the numbers how much they expanded. And this year, since it's going so big and we're expecting maybe a 10, 15% increase, we're actually going to uh, rent a tent for the library to put more things out there. So yeah, we we're expanding the library from the library from outside. So it's, yeah, it's, it's getting big. That's amazing. Yes, exactly. thank you. So this is going to be your first performance at the EMCon? Yeah. Yes. This is going to be my first. Yeah, this is also going to be my first oh. um, performance at EMCon. But not my first performance in general. I'm n I've I've been to Long Island a couple of times, but I haven't been to a convention in Long Island, so it's going to be pretty interesting. And when you guys are performing, what, what goes through your mind? I mean, is it just remember the dance steps, remember the song, or is there something else that's going on? Usually, with me, um, I try my best to get as much rehearsal time as possible because I do not want to like make make a mess up in the, um you know, when I'm performing. But usually if I do mess up, some people don't notice it. Or like, if I feel like there's something blank, sometimes like I freestyle dance. <laughs> <laughs> and like people would be like, wait, what is she? Oh, this is interesting. But um, she's I, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try my best. But um, usually I just like try to fill in the blanks because you know, most of the time people just don't really notice it. So um, I, I definitely memorize and rehearse a lot as much as I possibly could. So yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, like, uh, I think 
we already have the dance and singing in our mind. Um, it's actually built in our blood and muscle. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as the music plays, we just like automatically sings and dances. So uh, the rest, the rest of the performance, the most important thing is just to uh, communicate with the audience, like uh, give them the message, and you know, just make them happy and. Uh, imagination and instead of like just trying to memorize the singing and dancing yeah it is a whole different level of thing mm -hmm. yeah. when i perform well i haven't performed that many times but when i do what goes through my head is don't mess up don't mess up <laughs> don't mess up you won't get cake tonight don't mess up don't mess up no cake no ice cream I oh no, ice cream okay. Okay. Okay, I, it I changes. Got you. I got you. Yeah, usually, I mean, like, one time me and um, we, were, we were in the bathroom and we were, like, singing, and then, like, we were harmonizing, and then we're like, oh my god, it's really good, let's do it again. And then when we do it again, it makes it, Yeah, <laughs> when we try too hard, it's like, wait, no, we have to do that again. <laughs> not, not surprising, because there's a lot of, like, good bathroom singers there. <laughs> Everybody's a good bathroom singer. I sing very well in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> the shower flatters everybody's voice. Yeah. Because you relax. Yeah. yeah. When you try too hard, then you're like tense up all the muscles, mm -hmm. and then uh, your vocal cords like pushing too hard, and then it's not gonna sound good. So um, yeah, that's that's my idea of singing, like performing. Like you have to enjoy and relax yeah. yourself, <laughs> so now the people can enjoy you. Mm -hmm. Another problem that I often have is when I perform, I forget to smile, <laughs> and I just look. Kind of angry, <laughs> and like sad, I, I and I'm just <laughs> no. But like in my head, I'm like, yeah, this is going great. And in my face, my face is just going. Well, you can't see it because it's on the radio, but. Well, if you turn around, you can see it on the camera. There you go. Hi, hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like um, but like I try to smile as often as I can because I want to show that dancing and singing for me is fun, and I I'm glad that people watching are having fun watching us have fun. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's that's a dream, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. So how hard is Hitomi as a, as a boss, I guess? <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Hitomi didn't get me started. <laughs> she's a leader. Well, she is. OK, I understand. Um, I think she's a really good leader. You know, there are times where she kind of does annoy me, but, but, <laughs> but she's very good at just being like very creative and just like inspiring other people and just like even before I met Hitomi like I listened to her music and you know it really like uplifted me and usually I'm a very negative person <laughs> so you know like just her being there and her presence just really like made a major change in my life so yeah she's funny <laughs> <laughs> and she makes yeah. So so now we got uh, somebody hungry because we got ice cream, we got cake, and now we have tea <laughs> on, on the line. Yeah, I have a bagel in the car. I have, <laughs> to, I have to drive back to Brooklyn to get my materials. To make mm -hmm. tea. <laughs> so what about the costumes? Um, do you design the costumes yourself, Uh Now we get sponsored from the Stohime Romance. Oh, okay. And uh, like uh, they have like the most updated like Japanese fashion, the cutest like fashion you can find and you can you can wear them casually as well and yeah. that's why like uh, uh, recently we get a lot of like a uh, uh, custom sponsor including like accessories like you know uh, clothes and then like stockings and hair accessories and basically everything and uh, I really appreciate it and um, news is that we are doing our own design right now yeah. oh. and then the store going to um, take it and make like many copies oh so you're gonna have a clothing line then so yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna have a clothing line and then uh our fans and you know like uh kind of attendees can uh look at the clothing and buy it and we're gonna make it in Amer in american sizes this time <laughs> yeah so people can actually fit into them because we have that problem sometimes that mm -hmm. um, Comments. That's that's an interesting, nice way to put that. Yeah, Caddy, you want one? Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> I want some cat ears and a made outfit for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can see myself with that. What and about I you, Asan? You gonna wear a cat ear? <laughs> 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 Usually, I'm um, 
Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Usually the designs of the outfits will be based on different songs. Like Rainbow Bubble, we will wear different colored clothes, like a rainbow. Okay. Um, and then Shining Star will have like star designs, you know, stuff like that. It's yeah. gonna be cute. Yeah. So yeah, where can, can so where can people find us though? Because we only got five minutes left. So where, website, where are they gonna okay. be able to see you guys at? Himeromance.net. It's H I M E R O M A N C E. Dot net. Dot net. Okay. Hime is like princess. Princess in, in Japanese. Japanese. Uh -huh. So it's like the princess romance mm -hmm. store. It's cute. Yeah. Right. And also, we're going to be having our own website like later on in the month. Um, hopefully, it will be up soon. But um, you can also check us up um, check us up on our Facebook page. Um, you just go on Facebook and you type in Rainbow Bubble Girls, and we'll yeah. be there. Yeah. <laughs> and Kelly, what about you? Where, where can we find your stuff? Your promotion of the convention? Well, yeah, you can also find us on Facebook. Um, pretty much, uh, e um, MCON EMPL Anime Fest. That's E M C O N E M P L. Anime Fest, A N I M E F E S T. And you also f uh, look out for our website, www.mconanimefest.com. And um, yeah, you can check it out. And I believe you're going to be having some merchandise there too, right, uh, Toby, at the MCON? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could come by to the uh, around the uh, vendor alley and you can check out our stuff there too. And many other guests and uh, panels we're going to be having there. I uh, believe we're going to be having uh, also a pre party too, as, as well on Friday. On Friday, the 15th. Yeah, yeah, on the 15th. We're actually going to be having. Um, my man, the Dark Lord himself, on uh, uh, Demon Boy and his lightly ghoulies there. <laughs> and yes. at, at the library. Also. At, the library. at the library. Yeah, yes, at the library. Believe it or not, we actually did a Halloween bash. They called uh, um, MCON at Shabagulza. Oh, and uh, oh, yes, and we had Demon Boy and his peoples there, whatnot, and they pretty much rock out the house that night. All right, so we're almost out of time. So we're going to go around. Our final thoughts. So, Hassan, our final thought. I'm more than the final thought is they they frightened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly, final thought? Yeah, I have a final thought. I just want to give a shout out to my uh, my baby mama and my wife Jen. Uh, tomorrow's her birthday. Happy birthday! And also an early uh, Mother's Day to herself and my mother herself, uh, Sherba Dix. And also my son Mikel. I know you're watching me on on cam right now with my with my wife. Hello. And everybody at the East Middle Public Library for giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, do this convention. And also a thank out, a thanks and a shout out to our sponsors, Viz, uh, Viz Media, Funimation, Right Stuff Anime, uh, Eis the Will Eisner uh, Foundation, and all the lo uh, local merchandise that I mentioned earlier before. All right, thank you. God bless. All right, and you can tell me uh, final thought. Um, come to see us and uh, uh, anything. Well, I just want to thank everyone who's listening here on the radio, or just just thank everyone who's been like really supportive of us in general. You know, it's pretty hard like becoming an idol, just starting off like small and then just working our way up. But yeah. your your support really does help us a lot. Um, we will be giving out autographs at the booth, so if you want to come get an autograph, then. <laughs> um, I'd like to give a shout out real quickly if yeah, it's yeah. okay to like two seconds. Oh I'm sorry, uh, my best friend Brian and the Tumblr trash gang that I have <laughs> and my best friend Anna is in sixth grade, thank you, and my older sibling, thank you. Alright, so that <laughs> is Kelly Gordon from the MCON, Hitomi Himikawa and the Rainbow Bubble Group. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Make sure you go to the anime fest, which is in uh, two weeks. May 15th, 16th, and 17th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, make sure you go and uh, check out these guys. They're really great. And that about does it for this week on the Came From the Radio. Join us right here and every week on WGTV. If you miss any part of the show, you can go to our website, www.itcamefromradio.com. Listen to your archives. will be up in a week or so. Also on iHeartRadio, the archives will be up in a week or so. And on um, YouTube, which is we're recording right now, the live stream will be up on our YouTube page. Uh, make sure the pictures will be up there for the... Um, LI Geekcon will be up there tonight, and then in two weeks we'll have pictures from the uh, MCON. We will see you uh, next week. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. You have been listening to It Came From the Radio. We're still recording on the thing, so make sure we sign off for everybody. This is going to be airing live on the thing, so we'll see you next week. Go on, wave hi, everybody. The owners for